Louis XVI, born Louis August, also known as Louis Capet, was King of France from 1774 until his deposition in 1792, although his formal title after 1791 was King of the French. He was guillotined on January 21, 1793. His father, Louis, Dauphin of France, was the son and heir apparent of Louis XV of France, but his father died in 1765, and Louis succeeded his grandfather as king in 1774. The first part of Louis's reign was marked by attempts to reform France in accordance with Enlightenment ideals. These included efforts to abolish serfdom, remove the tie, and increase tolerance toward non-Catholics. The French nobility reacted to the proposed reforms with hostility, and successfully opposed their implementation. Louis implemented deregulation of the grain market, advocated by his liberal minister Turgot, but it resulted in an increase in bread prices. In period of bad harvests, it would lead to food scarcity which would prompt the masses to revolt. From 1776 Louis XVI actively supported the North American colonists, who were seeking their independence from Great Britain, which was realized in the 1783 Treaty of Paris. The ensuing debt and financial crisis contributed to the unpopularity of the ancient regime which culminated at the Estates General of 1789. Discontent among the members of France's middle and lower classes resulted in strengthened opposition to the French aristocracy and to the absolute monarchy, of which Louis and his wife, Queen Marie Antoinette, were viewed as representatives. In 1789, the storming of the Bastille during riots in Paris marked the beginning of the French Revolution. Louis' indecisiveness and conservatism led some elements of the people of France to view him as a symbol of the perceived tyranny of the ancient regime, and his popularity deteriorated progressively. His disastrous flight to Varennes in June 1791, four months before the constitutional monarchy was declared, seemed to justify the rumours that the king tied his hopes of political salvation to the prospects of foreign invasion. The credibility of the king was deeply undermined and the abolition of the monarchy and the establishment of a republic became an ever-increasing possibility. In a context of civil and international war, Louis XVI was suspended and arrested at the time of the insurrection of 10 August 1792 one month before the constitutional monarchy was abolished and the First French Republic proclaimed on 21 September 1792. He was tried by the National Convention, found guilty of high treason, and executed by guillotine on 21 January 1793. As a desacralized French citizen known as Citizen Louis Capet, a nickname in reference to Hugh Capet, the founder of the Capetian dynasty, which the revolutionaries interpreted as Louis's family name, Louis XVI is the only king of France ever to be executed, and his death brought an end to more than a thousand years of continuous French monarchy. Childhood Louis Auguste de France, who was given the title Duc de Berry at birth, was born in the Palace of Versailles. Out of seven children, he was the second son of Louis, the Dauphin of France, and thus the grandson of Louis XV of France and of his consort, Maria Leschinska. His mother was Marie Josepha of Saxony, the daughter of Frederick Augustus II of Saxony, Prince Elector of Saxony and King of Poland. Louis August had a difficult childhood because his parents neglected him in favor of his, said to be, bright and handsome older brother, Louis. Duc de Bourgogne, who died at the age of nine in 1761, a strong and healthy boy, but very shy, Louis August excelled in his studies and had a strong taste for Latin, history, geography, and astronomy, and became fluent in Italian and English. He enjoyed physical activities such as hunting with his grandfather and rough playing with his younger brothers, Louis Stanislas, Comte de Provence and Charles Philippe, Comte d'Artois. From an early age, Louis August had been encouraged in another of his hobbies, 
locksmithing, which was seen as a useful pursuit for a child. Upon the death of his father, who died of tuberculosis on 20 December 1765, the 11-year-old Louis August became the new dauphin. His mother never recovered from the loss of her husband, and died on 13 March 1767, also from tuberculosis. The strict and conservative education he received from the Duc de la Vaugouillon, Governor des Enfants de France, from 1760 until his marriage in 1770, did not prepare him for the throne that he was to inherit in 1774 after the death of his grandfather, Louis XV. Throughout his education, Louis August received a mixture of studies particular to religion, morality, and humanities. His instructors may have also had a good hand in shaping Louis August into the indecisive king that he became. Abbé Berthier, his instructor, taught him that timidity was a value in strong monarchs, and Abbé Soldini, his confessor, instructed him not to let people read his mind. Family life. On 16 May 1770, at the age of 15, Louis August married the 14-year-old Habsburg Archduchess Maria Antonia, his second cousin once removed and the youngest daughter of the Holy Roman Emperor Francis I and his wife, the formidable Empress Maria Theresa. This marriage was met with hostility by the French public. France's alliance with Austria had pulled the country into the disastrous Seven Years' War, in which it was defeated by the British, both in Europe and in North America. By the time that Louis August and Marie Antoinette were married, the French people generally regarded the Austrian alliance with dislike, and Marie Antoinette was seen as an unwelcome foreigner. For the young couple, the marriage was initially amiable but distant. Louis August's shyness and, among other factors, the young age and inexperience of the newlyweds, who were near total strangers to each other, having met only two days prior to their wedding, meant that the 15-year-old bridegroom failed to consummate the union with his 14-year-old bride. His fear of being manipulated by her for imperial purposes caused him to behave coldly towards her in public. Over time, the couple became closer, though while their marriage was reportedly consummated in July 1773, it was not in fact really so until 1777. Since the royal couple failed to produce any children for several years after their wedding, there was a strain upon their marriage. Whilst the situation was worsened by the publication of obscene pamphlets which mocked the infertility of the pair, one questioned, can the king do it? Can't the king do it? The reasons behind the couple's initial failure to have children were debated at that time, and they have continued to be so since. One suggestion is that Louis August suffered from a physiological dysfunction, most often thought to be phimosis. A suggestion first made in late 1772 by the royal doctors. Historians adhering to this view suggest that he was circumcised to relieve the condition seven years after their marriage. Louis' doctors were not in favor of the surgery, the operation was delicate and traumatic and capable of doing as much harm as good to an adult male. The argument for phimosis and the resulting operation is mostly seen to originate from Stefan Zweig, who is now known to have given undue prominence to evidence suggesting that Lewis had phimosis and to have suppressed other evidence that contradicted that interpretation. Zweig, a novelist not an historian, was influenced by the theories of his close friend, Sigmund Freud, and argued that Marie Antoinette's notorious frivolity in spendthrift ways resulted from her sexual frustration in the first seven years of her marriage. Most modern historians agree that Lewis had no surgery, for instance. As late as 1777, the Prussian envoy, Baron Goltz, reported that the King of France had definitely declined the operation. The fact was that Louis was frequently declared to be perfectly fit for sexual intercourse, confirmed by Joseph II. In during the time he was purported to have had the operation, he went out hunting almost every day, according to his journal. This would not have been possible if he had undergone a circumcision, at the very least. 
he would have been unable to ride to the hunt for a few weeks thereafter. The couple's consummation problems are now attributed to other factors. Antonia Fraser's biography of the Queen discusses Joseph II's letter on the matter to one of his brothers after he visited Versailles in 1777. In the letter, Joseph describes in astonishingly frank detail Louis's inadequate performance in the marriage bed and Antoinette's lack of interest in conjugal activity. Joseph described the couple as complete fumblers but with his advice, Louis began to apply himself more effectively to his duties as a husband, and sometime in the third week of March 1777 Marie Antoinette finally became pregnant. Physically both Louis and Marie Antoinette were very large persons who accumulated a lot of weight, the Queen because of her pregnancies and the King from his eating. The difference was that the Queen with her poof was able to impose herself on her court and was considered a cultural icon across Europe. The King on the other hand was not respected but only considered a good person with good intentions. Louis was one of the few French rulers who did not have a mistress and when some of his courtiers tried to present a mistress to him, he refused to the great satisfaction of Marie Antoinette. Eventually, in spite of all their earlier difficulty, the royal couple became the parents of four children. Marie Antoinette's lady-in-waiting, M.M.E. Campen, notes a miscarriage the Queen suffered after the birth of her first child, an incident dated to July 1779 by a letter to the Queen from the Empress. M.M.E. Campen states that Louis spent an entire morning consoling his wife at her bedside, and swore to secrecy everyone who knew of the incident. Marie Antoinette suffered a second miscarriage at the beginning of November 1783. The four live-born children were Marie Therese Charlotte, Louis Joseph Xavier Francois, the Dauphin, Louis Charles, Sophie Helene Beatrix, who died in infancy. Absolute Monarch of France, 1774-1789 When Louis XVI succeeded to the throne in 1774, he was 19 years old. He had an enormous responsibility, as the government was deeply in debt, and resentment to despotic monarchy was on the rise. Louis also felt woefully unqualified for the job. As king, Louis focused primarily on religious freedom and foreign policy. While none doubted Louis's intellectual ability to rule France, it was quite clear that, although raised as the Dauphin since 1765, he lacked firmness and decisiveness. His desire to be loved by his people is evident in the prefaces of many of his edicts that would often explain the nature and good intention of his actions as benefiting the people. He aimed to earn the love of his people by reinstating the parliaments. When questioned about his decision, he said, It may be considered politically unwise, but it seems to me to be the general wish and I want to be loved, in spite of his indecisiveness. Louis XVI was determined to be a good king, stating that he must always consult public opinion, it is never wrong. He therefore appointed an experienced advisor, Jean-Frédéric Felipeau, Comte de Maurepas who, until his death in 1781, would take charge of many important ministerial functions. Among the major events of Louis XVI's reign was his signing of the Edict of Versailles, also known as the Edict of Tolerance, on 7 November 1787, which was registered in the Parliament on 29 January 1788. This edict effectively nullified the Edict of Fontainebleau that had been law for 102 years. It granted non-Catholics, Calvinists, Huguenots, Lutherans, as well as Jews, civil and legal status in France, and gave them the right to openly practice their faiths. The Edict of Versailles did not legally proclaim freedom of religion in France. This took two more years. With the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen of 1789 however, it was an important step in eliminating religious tensions and it officially ended religious persecution within his realm. Radical financial reforms by Turgot and Malasherbis angered the nobles and were blocked by the parliaments who insisted that the king did not have the legal right to levy new taxes. 
So, in 1776, Turgut was dismissed and Malasherbus resigned, to be replaced by Jacques Necker. Necker supported the American Revolution, and he carried out a policy of taking out large international loans instead of raising taxes. He attempted to gain public favor in 1781 when he had published the first ever statement of the French crown's expenses and accounts, the Comte de Rendu au Roi. This allowed the people of France to view the king's accounts in modest surplus. When this policy failed miserably, Louis dismissed him, and then replaced him in 1783 with Charles Alexandre de Cologne who increased public spending to buy the country's way out of debt. Again this failed, so Louis Louis convoked the Assembly of Notables in 1787 to discuss a revolutionary new fiscal reform proposed by Cologne. When the nobles were informed of the extent of the debt, they were shocked into rejecting the plan. This negative turn of events signaled to Louis that he had lost the ability to rule as an absolute monarch, and he fell into depression. As power drifted from him, there were increasingly loud calls for him to convoke the Estates General, which had not met since 1614. At the beginning of the reign of Louis XIII, as a last-ditch attempt to get new monetary reforms approved, Louis XVI convoked the Estates General on 8 August 1788, setting the date of their opening at 1 May 1789. With the convocation of the Estates General, as in many other instances during his reign, Louis placed his reputation and public image in the hands of those who were perhaps not as sensitive to the desires of the French public as he was, because it had been so long since the Estates General had been convened, there was some debate as to which procedures should be followed. Ultimately, the Parlement de Paris agreed that all traditional observances should be carefully maintained to avoid the impression that the Estates General could make things up as it went along. Under this decision, the king agreed to retain many of the divisive customs which had been the norm in 1614 but which were intolerable to a third estate void by the recent proclamations of equality. For example, the first and second estates proceeded into the assembly wearing their finest garments, while the third estate was required to wear plain, oppressively sombre black, an act of alienation that Lewis would likely have not condoned. He seemed to regard the deputies of the Estates General with at least respect. In a wave of self-important patriotism, members of the Estates refused to remove their hats in the King's presence, so Louis removed his to them. This convocation was one of the events that transformed the general economic and political malaise of the country into the French Revolution. In June 1789, the Third Estate unilaterally declared itself the National Assembly. Louis' attempts to control it resulted in the tennis court oath on 20 June, the declaration of the National Constituent Assembly on 9 July, and eventually led to the storming of the Bastille on 14 July, which started the French Revolution, has been used to show how out of touch with reality he was but the document was more of a hunting log than a personal journal. When he did not go hunting, he wrote, Rien. He did not mean nothing important had happened that day.